SpaceX's Starship rocket, currently in development, looks set to impress. As CEO Elon Musk outlined a series of key updates at the firm's Texas facility recently. As we all know, a human settlement on Mars is one of Musk's most ambitious goals, which the new ship helps him accomplish. Want to find out more about SpaceX launching Starship this June 2022? Stay tuned until the end. There is no doubt that building a rocket is one of the most challenging tasks you can undertake. However, Elon Musk faces additional challenges. A visionary billionaire has proposed building the biggest and most powerful rocket humans have ever built, the Starship. Hence, Musk knew from the start that it was going to be hard. After the development of the rocket, many fans of space travel may have been unhappy with its delays. As it turns out, SpaceX will launch the Starship into orbit for the first time in June, but not before so many challenges and upgrades have been made to the ship. How did things change? Did anything remain the same? In what way will SpaceX launch the first Starship into orbit? We'll cover all these in this video, so you better watch out. Wouldn't it be cool if you could go to space? The countless mysteries of space may hold an irresistible appeal to you if you're an adventurer. Nevertheless, Elon Musk has an even more interesting proposition for you. A permanent space residency. Musk invites you to join his effort to colonize Mars if you can take care of your earthly affairs. Their goal is to have you join a group of over 1 million people that will form the nucleus of a new planet's first permanent human society. Unlike other adventures, the one Musk is on is not simply to have an adventure. Musk is on a mission to save humans from extinction. Ultimately, he hopes that a cosmic tragedy will cause the planet to go extinct and wipe the humans out. A rocket that can be powerful enough and endure the grueling journey between Mars and Earth is no mean achievement. Musk must design a rocket that can handle this challenge. For humans to be transported between the two planets, the rocket must first be capable of transporting tons of cargo. Musk's dreams, however, will not be realized if his rocket does not make financial sense. All of these factors and many more were taken into account when designing Musk's Starship. Due to its extreme importance, the Starship is the most powerful rocket ever devised and attempted. Using more than 30 new powerful rocket engines called Raptors, the rockets can fly, and the Starship's capacity for lifting cargo into orbit will be around 150 tons. There is, however, a configuration for carrying humans that allows for up to 100 people to travel at once. Musk has designed the Starship to be completely reusable to keep the operating costs as low as possible, so it can fulfill multiple missions just like an airplane. Adding this aspect to the design and construction is the most challenging, but it is important for people without an expansive net worth to be able to take part. The Starship is made up of two main sections, the upper section, also known as the ship or Starship, and the lower section or booster, known as the Super Heavy. Further, SpaceX aims to make turnarounds faster after each launch by swapping the first two stages, and it is expected that the company will have the Super Heavy ready for the second flight in less than an hour. I can only imagine the beehive of activity that will occur at SpaceX's facilities with the staff running through a checklist before giving the Starship the green light for its next journey. The Starship's fuel is even designed to be used repeatedly due to its extreme reusability in which methane and oxygen are used in combination. Because the Starship can theoretically make the return trip from Mars, it won't even need to carry fuel for returning to Earth. The Starship must undergo comprehensive testing as part of its development before its first flight into orbit. Although the Starship is ready from a design perspective, it also needs to be approved by several regulatory bodies, most notably the Federal Aviation Administration which we will discuss in this video. Cryoproof is one of the many tests that the Starship must pass. Before a spacecraft can be considered launch ready, it has to pass several of these tests. This is the third time in rapid succession that the new Super Heavy prototype Booster 7 has undergone cryoproof tests, the candidate for Musk's all-important maiden orbital flight. The crew had to carry out repairs to the ship after the first round of cryoproof tests caused damage. 
following the rapid mounting of the booster on the launch mount with SpaceX becoming an expert in this type of rapid mount. And after the crew had thoroughly tested all integrated systems, the prototype was put to the test. The strange thing about this particular test is that SpaceX went for a full cryoproof test straight away instead of taking incremental steps. Whether it was liquid nitrogen or a combination of liquid nitrogen and oxygen, the crew filled up the booster rapidly. The entire process took two hours and involved approximately one and a half Olympic swimming pools of liquid. As watchers looked on, they were not disappointed by the effect of the supercooled liquid on the booster. Then, frost and ice formed on the stainless steel body of the booster after moisture had accumulated there. In short order after filling the tanks, SpaceX has started emptying Booster 7. Through the use of insulated plumbing and well-insulated underground storage tanks, almost all of the liquid nitrogen and liquid used during the cryoproof test was saved. Thus, the company does not have to coordinate the delivery of hundreds of semi-trucks in preparation for another test, which would require many trucks. It was filled again by SpaceX a few days later, and this time, the booster was allowed to sit with fuel for about an hour before dispensing. Furthermore, the booster was connected to gas supplies and propellant storage through the umbilical cord, also known as the quick disconnect. In addition to providing power, this was also used for communications. It was evident that this cord was retracted and reconnected remotely, as if simulating situations where a flight can be abandoned after ignition. SpaceX must ensure that the quick disconnect can quickly reconnect to the booster without any human intervention in the event of an aborted launch of an orbital starship. If this is not achieved, it may lead to a disaster of catastrophic proportions after quick disconnect retraction. SpaceX is not overlooking the starship aspect of development as, for the first time in nine months, it has rolled out a new prototype. Although subtle, the physical changes on the starship are hard to miss for keen observers. A couple of years ago, SpaceX coupled the Booster 4 and Ship 20 to give the public a glimpse of the full-scale Starship system. Nevertheless, this release of a new ship prototype suggests SpaceX will launch its first orbital mission with two new prototypes. This is also the first SpaceX Starship with the next-generation nose. It is also the first spacecraft with a potentially functional payload bay door, as well as a major redesign of the landing propellant tank or header tank and upgraded Raptor rocket engines power the new Starship. Along with the rocket it will power, SpaceX is developing the Raptor. SpaceX currently plans to install 33 Raptor engines on Booster 7 so that there is enough room for four additional Raptors. Although the ship is missing hundreds of TPS tiles and an aero cover cap, SpaceX is currently satisfied that it is ready for qualification testing. In a drive-by environment, the prototype has been set up on a kind of drive-by test where the crew will initially perform pressure and cryogenic tests. After the ship passes these basic tests, it will be installed on suborbital pad A, which has been upgraded to facilitate qualification tests. SpaceX is unlikely to conduct a fire test right away since it would be very risky. To simulate the thrust of Raptor V2 engines, the Starship's steel tanks and pipings should first be chilled to cryogenic temperatures Using hydraulic rams, with its thruster liftoff capability, the ship will endure about 1,400 tons of thrust, which is 25% more than its predecessor did. But for the much-awaited first orbital flight to take place, the FAA must give its approval. This proved difficult as the body continued to postpone approval, leaving Gwyn Shotwell, the president and CEO of SpaceX, with the responsibility to launch the company into space as soon as June. Then. Environmental Reviews or Programmatic Environmental Assets, or PEAs, are tying up the works. As the FAA's website indicates, the fourth of five steps is nearing completion. At this stage, government agencies and local stakeholders have to work together. Currently, only one item could cause a problem, but SpaceX has already made several compromises. Are you excited about the Starship launch soon? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Also, thank you for watching. If you would like to receive updates on Elon Musk and his companies, make sure you click the subscribe and bell button.